Hey everyone, it's Desi Chang, and today I'm gonna to be doing a video, uh, something that I've been really wanting to do for a very long time, but haven't had the time to, uh, but I'm really, really excited about this one, and that is the best backpack, camera backpack of 2022. Now, a lot of these backpacks were either given to me or I purchased myself. Uh, no one has asked me to do this, so these are all my own personal thoughts and opinions. Now, I'm not gonna go through every single feature of this of each of the bags just because otherwise it would be like an hour long video uh, but I'm just gonna go briefly through some of the the, the main features of why I love or, or I don't love uh, each one of the bags so first let's start off with my favorite camera backpack of the year uh, and right now it's my go-to camera backpack and I'm gonna be using it as my number one every single time and that is gonna be the Tenba um, Axis version two. And the reason why I like this is um, just because it's 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 kind of like the low pro um, pro tactic. However, it's just got a few more features that I like better. So for example, the laptop compartment is at the front, it's not at the back. Um, you can actually have storage at the front area right here. So if you had an extra jacket, um, hold fast money maker, uh, things, straps like that, you can actually put that in here in addition to your laptop in the front area. The other thing I like about it is that you can strap it a gimbal to the exterior of the bag. And the last main thing that I really like about it, besides it's being comfortable and it stands up on its own, Oh, and also it has a, uh, sorry, a quick access. And the size of the quick access is great because a lot of the quick accesses um, that I've seen in backpacks, they're kind of small and they'd only be good for a small mirrorless camera. But this is almost full size, meaning that you can, if you had like a 5D Mark II or a, a Nikon D850, that would be no problem. It, you can actually get your full hand in there and get a full size DSLR in there. But let me kind of show you why I like this. Um, just really, really briefly, why I like it is because it's large and spacious and you can fit um, your big, huge Canon RF lenses um, with um, attached to bodies in here um, and it won't compromise. You can have your 7200 with your lens hood attached to it. A lot of the other camera backpacks I've noticed is you have to take the lens hood off in order for it to fit the backpack, but this one's wide enough that you can fit it all. And uh, that's why this is my favorite camera backpack of 2022. So next up, we have the bigger brother. This is the 32 liter version uh, of the Tenba Axis. I actually bought this one first and realized it was too big to carry around as an everyday carry. Uh, so I bought the 24 liter version instead. And the, now this is awesome. I'm still gonna keep it. And the reason is I'm probably not gonna use it for, you know, if I'm doing photography or anything like that. However, when I'm doing video uh, and I'm using my Sony FX6, this fits in here without me needing to break the camera down. So the only thing I have to take off is just the XLR mic, um, but you know, might not, you might not even choose to have that option. But I have my lens attached, I have my top handle, I have the little side grip on there, and it kind of fits right in there perfectly. So uh, that's one thing that I really like about this bag is that it fits this system perfectly. And I still have room for lenses and maybe a second body down below. Now there is one kind of design flaw here. Um, where it also exists on the 24 liter version, but not as much, is that when you do grab it and when you have stuff in here, notice how this kind of just pops up right here. And so it creates kind of an open hole. And so whatever gear you have up top will potentially fall down. But this is just the layout I have in here. I think um, a traditional other layout is that you can actually put your camera, um, uh, you know, up here and access it from this top compartment. So this might not be a big deal or might not even be a deal at all. Um, but yeah, I just want to kind of create that note. So moving along, this is the Wander Provoke version two or the newest 2022 version um, and 21 liter. And I like it just because it's an amazing, or it's, it's probably the one of the the top two best looking backpacks that I have. And at the 21 liter size, it's not that big and it's not too small. Uh, I just really, really love the look and design of it. Functionality though, um, you know, one main thing I don't like about it is just, you know, it takes time for you to actually, you know, to access the top, you have to, you know, 
unhook it, and then you have to roll it up top, and then you gotta open it up again. That's like three things as opposed to just you know a standard zipper. Um, and in terms of the main, and, and this is a comfy backpack, I like it, but it's in terms of how they've made the, or, um, the layout of the camera cube compartment, it's really only good for smaller cameras, meaning that if you had just had a Fujifilm system, Panasonic Olympus, um, or even if, I mean, it will fit, you know, your Canon EOS R or, you know, things like that, but uh, you're gonna take the lens hood off. Same thing with your Sony. If you had Sony small lenses, it will fit, but if you had one of those bigger G Masters, it just, it's just not very economically friendly um, in, in how it's laid out. So that's just like, you know, if you're just carrying just a single body and a one lens, then this is, a, you know, a great bag to have. But just keep in mind that you're buying it for its looks. Uh, and and it's, kind of, it's functional in the sense that, you know, it, it does work, but you, it's just, it won't, it won't be as quick to access as any all the other bags with just a standard zipper. So just to keep that in mind. But I really love this bag. I'm never gonna sell this bag. Um, I love it. So yeah. Next up, we have the Langley Alpha Globe Trotter. Uh, now this bag I love. The only thing I don't like about it is it's probably one of the most the least comfortable backpacks that I have. Um, you know it works, but uh, if you're gonna be carrying around. Um, for long periods of time, it does. It doesn't feel that comfortable. Um, but let me talk about why I love it so much. Number one, the looks it looks awesome. But this front zipper area, this can hold you know your larger lenses, your your big you know Sony G Master lenses with a lens hood, or even the Sony RF lenses with a lens hood. And it's deep enough that it'll go in, um, and it just can kind of carry a lot. And this top compartment as well. Um, it's just really, really easy to access your top compartment, your your essentials, or even larger awkward things such as if you had a um, external large flash, it will fit in there. Or if you had like um, uh, a camera like a Sony FX3 with the top handle, that'll fit into this top section. So it's quite versatile, and it has you know three big large accessory pockets. So there's a lot of things going on with this bag, um, although it looks kind of simplistic, and it's also waterproof. So this bag I love. So moving along to the Shimoda um, Explore V2. So I know I voted this as my best favorite camera backpack um, ever of 2021, but I'm actually kind of go backwards. And to be honest, I'm I'm actually gonna sell this backpack. And the reason is because um, I, you know I like the look of it, I like the design of it, but one thing that didn't really work for me was just this is the medium one too. This is not even the small one. It's just this back compartment here. <clears throat> so these are quite stiff, these dividers. So it kind of has a similar-ish problem to the Wander Provoke where it's not space efficient. So if I have larger lenses, I'm gonna have to take the lens hood off for it to kind of fit in here. And same thing with kind of getting out of that side axis or, or even you know, wherever, everything is just so rigid and just a little bit too small that when I have my Sony RF lenses, um, or my, again, my Sony larger G Master lenses, it just doesn't fit as well. And so that's kind of one of the main things I, I just been stopping using this backpack mainly because of that. But if you had the smaller Sony lenses, Fujifilm, this will fit perfectly and you know, this will be great. But otherwise, super comfortable bag. And like I said, last year it did come with these crazy way too um, beefed up straps and I had to buy these um, women's straps that were more like normal straps. So that's another thing expense that you could have to kind of take into consideration. But otherwise very comfortable and it's, it's uh, you know, functional. But again, even though this is like a the 30 liter size, it doesn't really fit, you know, the camera equipment that I would want to have. So next up, we have the uh, Mindshift Backlight 26 liter. I got this backpack quite a few years ago and I've held on to it. And to, but to be honest, I actually haven't really used it in the last few years. Um, I, I like it, it's great, uh, great functionality. Uh, I think the reason why I stopped using it is because some of the other backpacks like the Tenba Access V2, it just offers more. So one thing that I, like and I don't like about it is, you know, you have this, uh, you know, compartment where you can kind of put two bodies right here, but this, you really have room for lenses on this one side. And again, it's not even that thick. So I feel like this backpack is too narrow and it doesn't allow 
for me to have my larger, thicker lenses with a lens hood attached to it. And so that's kind of like the main reason why. And the other main reason, or the other reason, I mean, is that look. I mean, I wouldn't be carrying around this too much uh, walking around the city. It just looks more like an outdoor adventure uh, hiker's backpack as opposed to something I would be working or using in an urban environment. Up next, we have the Brevity Runner. So this is the same, pretty much the same thing as the Brevity uh, jumper. However, this one has a kind of flip top. Uh, the other, the jumper has just more of a zip top. But I like this one because you have that one extra pocket right here. You save a nice pocket right here in addition to your kind of whatever you want in here. So the good and the bad. I mean, uh, the good is price. It's relatively inexpensive and it's simple. It's very lightweight. It's very, very small. Uh, it can hold a 15 inch laptop as well as, you know, I love this kind of front organizer compartment right here. It, you know, it's got like four stash pockets in here. You can put hard drives, your chargers, everything in there. And the other great thing about it is that for su surprisingly for something so small, you know, you have this compartment that you, it fits a Canon R5 with a larger lens to it. Um, and you can fit your lens hood with it. So I'm just, you know, it's, it's weird how like this backpack is smaller than some of the other backpacks like the um, Shimoda, but this is much more space efficient than those other backpacks. Now, the only downfall about this is that I wouldn't rely on this backpack as my main travel backpack or, um, you know, something I would take to work. Uh, and the only reason is because it's lacking a few features. You know, it doesn't have a sternum strap. Um, it's, you know, this top compartment is good for small essentials, but it doesn't fit, you know, a lot of other things. And so it's just size wise, it's just a little bit small. And I feel like if Brevity made this, but in a larger size, uh, that would be another big hit. So yeah, this is a great inexpensive option for, uh, yeah, uh, for everyone, for anyone who's looking for, to buy a camera backpack on a budget and doesn't need to carry a lot of stuff. It's got a quick access. Also the quick access is larger than the Wander Provoke, which is just weird and mind boggling and has a nice little, you know, water bottle pocket. So, so next up we have the Gura Gear Kiboko City Commuter 18 to 22 ish liter backpack. Uh, now the quality materials, uh, that have gone into this bag are absolutely amazing. Like the zipper poles, the zippers, the fabric and material, this X-Pack um, Cordura design. Um, it's amazing. There are, they kind of overthought thought it um, with some things, just like, for example, like some of these like um, uh, strap keepers kind of thing. When you kind of roll it up, you know, they thought that, okay, you don't have all these dangling straps, but they're kind of like big chunky things. And especially with the sternum strap, it's kind of more annoying than it is helpful because you have this kind of like big chunky thing that's kind of dangling on your chest. And if you cinch it up here, then it's tough because then you're going to undo it to kind of like cinch it up and everything. Um, and the other kind of thing I, I don't like about it is that to access, uh Oh, this thing just got, let me undo that. <clears throat> and the other couple of things that small little design quirks, which I don't really love about it is that because this is so thick, it eats into the space of this bag. So you can't have your lenses, um, stand up or any kind of taller ones. They have to be kind of short lenses. Uh, otherwise they'll just have to be kind of laying flat. Um, and that would, that's kind of designed inefficient. And the other thing is to access this main, this top compartment, you do have to unroll the top, um, uh, roll top and you can't access from this back compartment. I wish they kind of op allowed you to open it from this back area. It's a little bit annoying. And, uh, yeah, those are just kind of a few small design flaws, but if you did have a smaller camera system, like using Fujifilm and their smaller lenses, I feel like this is a perfect and a great backpack, uh, for you. Um, but it's just a little bit too small for my liking, but if they did make a larger one and just, you know, adjusted some of these design issues, um, I feel like this is going to be a, a great backpack. Next up, let's talk about the Gura Gear Kaboko 22 liter. Uh, this is the version two. And this thing is super comfortable. And this bag also has the nicest zippers I've ever felt it, out of any other backpack I've ever touched or held. The zippers are absolutely amazing. Uh, now, this is kind of like 22 liters. It's kind of like a medium. And again, like same thing. Yeah, it's like a medium size. And it's kind of has this butterfly opening. Whoa, I have all these 
thick, it comes with a ton of dividers. But it's kind of great because you can kind of separate um, your either side. So um, I think it was meant for if you're going to be on a safari and you know if you you didn't want things to get too too dusty, so you can have you know one big large lens and a telephoto on this one side, um, but still kind of keep the other side kind of hidden. Uh, that was kind of like the main uh, design thinking of this bag, and I really like it. And I love how they have these two large kind of organizers front organizers on either side and that is something that i truly appreciate because there's some some companies you know they kind of under design it and there's not very much organization uh for small accessories such as like wander there's like very bare bare minimum um but uh yeah this is a really really comfortable backpack and I, for me personally though, I mean, I know that I, I'm not gonna go on a safari, but I would have enjoyed or preferred it if it was just kind of like one large zip so you can kind of open and access everything at the same time as opposed to just doing one side or the other side. Um, that's just me in my personal opinion though. Uh, but otherwise it's it's a pretty comfortable backpack. And this, again, this one, just like the other one, feels bomb proof uh, materials. It's weatherproof. It's just really a lot of really well thought things have been put into this bag. Uh, which I like. So yeah, the, this is the Gura Gear Kaboko 22 liter. Next up, we have the Peak Design V2 Everyday Backpack. I'm gonna sell this. I really don't like this bag. Uh, I know on paper, this is the perfect backpack and you can do this, 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 and that. Um, however, Number one, it's it's kind of inefficient. Like again, you gotta open one side to access one stuff, and if you have to go to the other side, you gotta open up the other side. Um, it's just not as efficient as a backpack that you can either lay down on its front or back and just kind of open it up and see all of your gear and access it. And there's not much expandability to this. I mean, I know that you know with this top compartment you can expand a little bit, but not really. I mean, if you have your camera and lens in here, just the way it is, you can only fit like you know a camera and a lens, or maybe two lenses, and that's about it. Um, and everything's just kind of a little bit tight. So uh, it also it doesn't really, uh, you know, it just, it, it looks nice, it's sleek, the design, but just in terms of how it functions and works, it's just not the bag for me. But the only thing I love about this backpack as opposed to the other backpacks is just these large side uh, expandable water bottle pockets. You know, you can, you can put your umbrella in here, you can put two water bottles in here. Uh, a lot of bags don't have that for some reason, camera backpacks that is, but uh, I really enjoy that. But sorry, Peak Design, gone. This is the Peak Design Travel Backpack, uh, the 30 to 45 liter version. And uh, this is something, this is a bun bag I'm gonna keep because I just love, this is like, if you got you guys need to watch like the full feature walkthrough of this backpack. But this thing kind of expands from the front. You can, you can open it so you can access it from both sides. You have two extremely large water bottle pockets on either side. Um, it's just the jack of all trades for everything. So if you kind of open it up, oh, I got like a bunch of cables and stuff like that in here. Um, got a camera. Um, now, I will tell you one thing. So same thing, like this, even though this is a super, ex like extremely large backpack, it is a little bit space inefficient just because you have this camera cube. Camera cube takes up a little bit of space. So even with this kind of like medium-ish to large-ish, uh, you can't really fit, you know, too much, uh, like, I'm oh, sorry, larger lenses with their lens hoods attached. It's just kind of like awkward when you kind of fit it in there. So, but again, for medium things or things with no lens hoods, you should be good. Um, but uh, I, I really like this backpack. It's just a little bit too big to carry around as an everyday backpack. Um, and But if I had to, you know, choose, go for a larger version, Again, I would still stick with the uh, Tenba uh, Access V2 32 liter version. Um, even though this one expands up to 45 liter, this is more of a travel backpack where you can shove clothes in there and just random accessories like cables and stuff like that. Whereas the other one's more designed specifically to have your camera body and lenses and stuff like that. Next up, this is the uh, in-case uh, DSLR Pro Pack. And now this is kind of like an inexpensive camera backpack, just like the Brevity, but this one will kind of hold a lot more. You have your kind of like front compartment, which you can kind of put your laptop and also you can even have space to shove in a jacket or anything like that. Uh, it does have a quick access top, so you can have like a top loading uh, design. And on the back side, uh, you can kind of carry all of your, where's that, here it is. Ooh. Now, the one thing to note about this is that 
these dividers and also the depth of it is meant more meant for smaller camera lenses. Again, so if you had like larger ones, they will fit in here if it's not as space efficient. But there's tons of compartments if you had a bunch of Fujifilm lenses um, or just like smaller lenses in general, this is, this is gonna be great. And so, um, yeah, this backpack, but again, it's kind of like where the mind shift has, a, you know, it's a little bit narrow, so you can't fit too many things side by side, um, or sorry, too many thicker items side by side. But uh, yeah, no, this backpack, this is actually one of my first camera backpacks. Um, actually sold my original one because it was falling apart. Uh, and I kind of bought another one because I loved it so much. I haven't really used it as much, uh, but I like how it's just got this minimalistic design it, you could just be you know going to school or just like walking around the city and no one would no one would ever tell that or think that this is a camera backpack so it just looks like a school bag uh the one thing i don't like about this bag is how shallow and not deep and not big this um water bottle pocket is it's essentially useless you can't really put a water bottle in there unless you had a small water bottle um but uh, yeah that's my main gripe or thing i don't like about this bag otherwise it's it's a comfy bag to use Next up, we have the Think Tank Shapeshifter uh, V2. This is the 17 liter skin version. Um, but this bag is the most comfortable camera backpack and actually backpack in general I've ever used in my entire life. The, I don't know, just how the straps are so soft and cushy and wide and thick. And same thing with this back panel. It's the most comfortable backpack I've ever, ever, ever used. And it just kind of molds. So it's not like one big boxy thing that fits on my back. It's got some, you know, you can actually, you know, it molds to your back, which is uh, what I, one thing I like. Now this is the skin version. So the other thing I don't like about it is, to be honest, I don't think it's very attractive. It looks like a computer bag. Uh, it's kind of ugly, but it's got pockets within pockets. It's like this front organization. Like, look at this, this is insane. It's just got like all these organizers and, and it's like, yeah, I, I really, really like this bag. Let me just kind of open her up for you. Uh, there is a separate laptop compartment too and you can also put it in a tablet, but let's see, here it is. So this is kind of like the skin version. Uh, meaning that it doesn't come with anything. You gotta uh, buy your separate um, attachment points or uh, uh, pouches that you can attach onto here. Um, I don't necessarily like it so much because I prefer the traditional backpack design where you can just like slot and just easily find and see where your lenses are. Um, but this is more like uh, something where you would travel somewhere, you take and then you build your camera. So yeah, you'd have to take the lens off your body and put your body into a pouch. Um, so it's not uh, as quick as a backpack uh, to access as the other bags. It's more of like, hey, I'm gonna travel to one location. I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna, I'm gonna load up all my gear and just kind of leave this backpack off to the side. Um, but it's just like super comfortable. So this is the Think Tank Shapeshifter. Next up, we have the Think Tank Urban Access 15 and 13. To be honest, I shouldn't have bought the 13, so let's get rid of that. A little bit too small. So let's just talk about the 15 inch. So the 15, this has actually been my, probably uh, for two or three years uh, in a row, like this has been probably my favorite backpack. If I only had one camera backpack, this would be the backpack I would ride with. And the reason is because it's the most versatile out of all the camera backpacks. It fits my you know, R5 with 7200 and 28 to 70 lens with lens hoods attached. It's got like, it's quite spacious. Let me show you. So it's quite spacious. You can fit all those things. You can fit it with the battery grip. Uh, it has room for a 15 inch laptop. It has dual water bottle pockets. So you got a water bottle or a gimbal on, on this side, another water bottle or a gimbal on that side. And you can even, it's also quick access. So it's a large quick access. It's not like you can just grab your camera body and that's it. It's like, no, you can grab your camera body and lenses or three lenses or whatever. And you can open it from all three sides or all two sides, that side or that side. Um, it also has this like front large pocket right here. So you can even f throw in an additional jacket in here, your hold fast money maker, or you can actually put your gimbal in this front pouch as well. Okay, what about your small accessories? The other great thing about it is that at the very top, it's got room to put all of your accessories in there and it's got um, small little stretchy pockets on all three or 
three of the sides and also has a, a zippered pocket up here. So it has a lot of organization uh, for you to put your smaller accessories. Or if you didn't want that, you could, this is actually Velcro. You can actually open it up and you can actually access your camera from the top. So this is probably the most versatile backpack and it's comfortable. But the only thing I don't like about it is the look. Uh, not a huge fan of the look. It just kind of, it just looks like a meh camera backpack. Um, I don't know. And, uh, but it is kind of big, but again, the most versatile camera backpack I have ever used. I did switch over to the Tenba and just because it kind of looks a little like it has that tactical look to it. I just like the look of it better. Uh, I can carry roughly around the same amount of equipment, maybe even a little bit more compared to this one. It doesn't have dual side access and it doesn't have dual water bottle pockets, which is a downfall, but I mean, I'm talking about the Tenba that is, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm good for it. It's time for a change, but I'm still gonna keep this backpack. The um, uh, the 13, the 13 smaller, the smaller one, the 13, uh, I wouldn't recommend it just because it's, it's a little bit too small. I mean, putting the same camera in there, it's just not as good. I mean, it's better for an everyday carry, but it's meh. Just stick to the 15. Okay, so up next is the Think Tank Backstory 15. Uh, now this is kind of a much slimmer camera backpack the straps are actually a little bit more comfortable than the um think tank urban access and let's open her up and show you what this looks like boom so again it's kind of like that mind shift backpack the mind shift bath light it's a little bit more narrow it's a little bit more shallower um so you can i can't carry as much gear and, and larger things as I would with the other backpack. Uh, it does come with tons of dividers. I mean, I don't have them all in here. I've kind of put them away. But uh, yeah, the one thing I didn't like about this backpack, it was just a little tight. Um, even in this kind of, it does have this front compartment, just like the, uh, the other backpack where you kind of put your laptop in and, and cram in a small jacket, but it doesn't expand out very, very much. So everything's just a little bit tight. I like that it has this quick access and I like it has dual side water bottle pockets, but this is just kind of like a, a simplified version of the other one. And if you're gonna kind of, if you're gonna buy one, I would say buy the think tank version over this one. Uh, not a huge fan of this heathered gray color. I mean, it's okay. Uh, looks decent, but uh, I prefer something that's, you know, something like the Wandered or something a little bit more tactical. Next up, we have the Wandered Duo. Uh, this is like a waterproof backpack. Uh, now, I did use this one time in torrential downpour for a full hour. And I have to say, it's it's fully waterproof. Uh, and that this is, that, I feel like this should be the only reason to get this backpack if you wanted a fully waterproof backpack. But otherwise, it's a little bit too small for my liking and for me to use as an everyday backpack. And also comfort-wise, it's okay. It's They're kind of, you know, a little bit stiff and rigid. Um, and it has this kind of neoprene back panel, which if you're using in a hot summer day, it will get hot. Um, I like, you know, having a little bit more mesh material to it. But let's kind of open her up. And it's, it's got, and I kind of got that, you know, side quick access so you can kind of access it from either side. Um, but yeah, just, and it's small little pockets that you can kind of put your small lenses in here and you can put your laptop up there. Oh, to be honest, I'm mostly probably gonna sell this backpack. Um, it's not it's not one that I've used in the last couple of years. And uh, it's not something that I, I need to keep with me because if it is downpour, uh, I'll probably just still keep with the camera backpack that I have and I'll just throw on a rain sleeve or something like that. Um, but uh, yeah, so this is the Wandered Duo. I would only buy it if you need just like, very, if you're very, very simplistic with your gear and you're using smaller gear um, and you just want that waterproofness. Otherwise, if you don't care about waterproofness, don't even bother with this backpack. Coming towards the end here, uh, this is the Low Pro Fast Pack 250. Uh, th this is the older version. I know there's a newer version. I don't like it because it's kind of, it's got that gray color. I do like the, the design in terms of there's like an extra pocket or two at the top here. It's actually very, very similar and same design. But again, what, if you're talking about one of the most inexpensive, affordable backpacks, that's great. Low Pro, this, this backpack is amazing. It's soft, it's rigid, it's large enough that you kind of carry your essential gear. Um, it's kind of, it's got this large side axis that's absolutely amazing. Let's kind of open this up. 
but yeah you can definitely carry like a you know a body with a lens or two put another big lens down here maybe a flash or some small accessories at the top here and if you had your jacket and stuff like that you can kind of put it up top here and there's some organization um, and the other thing is that, yeah, and you can also fit your laptop onto the side. These straps are fairly comfortable, not the most comfortable, but uh, decent enough. Uh, you get, you get what you pay for, but, uh, yeah, if you're looking for an inexpensive option, this is the bag. And finally, there is one other honorable mention, and that is the uh, Low Pro Pro Tactic version two. I do not own that backpack, but however, I have like five other photographer, videographer friends that do, and it's it's an amazing backpack. It's a tactical backpack. It's very easy because you open it up, you can access all of your gear. It holds, you know, uh, cameras with grips on it. It's got a lot of space. It's not too too expensive, um, but you know, for me the kind of equivalent backpack that not everyone has is going to be the Tenba Axis V2. It's very similar to the Low Pro Pro Tactic, um, but it just offers, the main thing that it offers more is just this front compartment where you can throw in a jacket, throw in a gimbal, throw in your laptop, all in this front area right here. Um, that's to me, that's that's one of the big things. And it has a built-in uh, water bottle pocket or a gimbal holder. It's actually, they advertise it that it's, this is thing is deep enough and long enough that it's gonna hold on to your gimbal. Um, but uh, yeah, and it's, it's fairly comfortable. So anyways, let's wrap this up with my top three or four favorite camera backpacks right here. Uh, so number one, we have the Tenba Axis V2. This is gonna be my go-to for photo or for video. Um, if I'm not using the FX6, I'm, this is pretty much my backpack of choice. Um, secondly, I am gonna say that the other backpack I would like to use is the Wandered Provoke. This is more of like an everyday backpack where I'm just kind of just bringing my laptop and you know one camera with a couple lenses. If I'm using my Fujifilm or my Leica, I'd just be using you know this backpack just because it looks so good and it's it's relatively comfortable. I love this backpack. Third up, oh, one backpack that I will never sell, the Langley Alpha Globetrotter. So, you know, kind of like the um, uh, Tenba Axis right here, um, it holds a lot of gear um, and it's really good looking. So it's, I feel like it's kind of like a hybrid between, um, you know, this tactical thing that holds a lot of gear and this one to provoke that looks beautiful. So this one kind of looks beautiful, um, holds a lot of gear, but the only thing is it's just not very comfortable. So ugh, that's like the one thing. Come on, I know they've improved the back panel, but they got to do something with the straps. I mean, guys, you, you got to like, Guys at Langley, you need to try on other backpacks to see how comfortable those other ones are compared to this one. But despite that, I still love this. And just adding a fourth backpack to this is the Think Tank Urban Access. Um, this is probably one of the ugliest looking ones. Uh, I don't, but you know what? Who cares about you know how it looks? This backpack, functionality wise, is probably the most versatile Swiss Army knives out of all the bunches. And so I feel like this is a backpack I will never get rid of. So between, you know, all these four backpacks, I feel like I could probably sell them, I mean the other ones, and keep these four, but uh, we'll see, I'm a hoarder, so probably not. Anyways, if you've enjoyed this review and you wanna see me do more videos just like this, please like and subscribe, and definitely don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Desi31.